kick off this meeting and actually address uh, those exact items, uh, Benita, you just brought up. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ultimate Northern Lights Yukon Zoom presentation. We've got a great group going here. Uh, some really good questions from our guests as we were leading up to this presentation about actually see, seeing Northern Lights. So there's two things, three things that we do uh, to ensure you get the best opportunity to see Northern Lights. So one thing is, is we travel during the new moon. And if you're running a professional Northern Lights tour, you have to fall on the new moon. And what is a new moon? It's the opposite of a full moon. So there is no moon light, right? It's black. The new moon, uh, February 2024 in Whitehorse and Tagish is February the 9th. And as you can see, we've timed this out perfectly to stay at Southern Lakes Resort when there'll be the new moon to give us the best opportunity. Uh, that being said, when we go up to Dawson uh, and we're working with the local guides up there, one of these guides actually works with um, that other company um, that just does the van every night. And he said Northern Lights are about a 65% chance of seeing them up in the Yukon. So just to give you some hard numbers there, uh, we did see them last year. They weren't as strong as they were uh, in Iceland. You see those pictures, but we saw them last year at Southern Lakes Resort. And we did see the Northern Lights in Dawson, and it was the funniest thing. We're in downtown Dawson, and there was a beam, it almost a thick uh, green, and it almost looked like it was a spaceship beam coming down. Like, what? I've never seen the Northern Lights. What is that? It got very exciting. Like, it's just, wow. Then we crossed the frozen, and I'll show you, we crossed the frozen river, uh, the Yukon River, to go to the yurt your warm yurt, and they didn't come back. <laughs> so we got our first glimpse, very strong, uh, and then didn't see them. Uh, but as I say, we did see them in uh, in Tagish at the Southern Lakes Resort. So, uh, so that's one of the reasons why, so new moon is one reason we do our best to see the Northern Lights. The other way that we do this is we don't just go to Whitehorse. We go up to Dawson City, way up north to see the Northern Lights. We also go to Whitehorse, where you could see Northern Lights. And then we go to Tagish, which is away from all the city lights. It's an hour and a half drive from Whitehorse. It's very remote. Okay, so we've got three opportunities, ultimate Northern Lights, uh, to see them. Okay, um, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen here. And can everybody see this itinerary? Yep. So Iris, that's the copy that you're gonna get. It's in uh, exactly the same copy, uh, just uh, half full that goes into this little package that you're gonna receive with everything you need to know prior to the trip. So uh, first of all, we've got a presentation to go through and this basically just walks through the itinerary, but let's start over here. So like all of our overnight multi-day tours, you're going to get picked up in a black car. And that black car is going to take you to YVR. Uh, we will have a staff member meeting you at the airport. Uh, Jessica, our uh, booking agent, just got back from the airport seeing a group off to Costa Rica. And they really appreciated uh, helping out with the air tickets and getting you all straightened out there. Uh, we're going to fly from YVR to Whitehorse. And we always fly Air North when we go to Yukon, one of my favorite airlines. The reviews are very good. You do get a half a sandwich and you get a hot cookie. <laughs> you just don't see this anymore, right? Uh, turkey, veggie, or ham, they're very good. Uh, and every flight you take with Air North, there's that sandwich again, there's that warm cookie. So uh, that being said, Air North, and maybe this is a reason why other tour companies don't go up to Dawson in the winter to see Northern Lights, is it can be a little bit tricky with Air North as they don't release their schedule until four months prior to departure. So we have to use past data, in other words, past year flight schedule to guesstimate when they're going to go. Unfortunately, this year, it didn't work out in that 
uh, we have to spend one night in Whitehorse before we fly up to Dawson. But the way that I've uh, constructed the itinerary, it's exactly the same. You're not missing one item from what you paid for. Okay. So again, we are going to fly into Whitehorse. And we have a private transfer taking us from uh, the Whitehorse International Airport to the Best Western Gold Rush Inn. So first of all, here is a picture of the Southern Lakes Resort with the Northern Lights. Uh, I do want to say that 95% uh, of our pictures are all original or provided to us by partners. Okay, These are all the exact locations that we're going to. Um, there's the black card that's going to pick you up. Might not be that gentleman there. Uh, Vidnoid and his team do a really great job. All the black cars have bulletproof windows. So <laughs> you're very secure. That's a joke, Iris. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, and I should say, this is the, uh, the clothing package that you're going to receive. I know that you've been working with the team here and enjoy the journey to get the right sizing. And the actual clothing package is even better than what you see. Uh, you'll see some of our guests wearing this clothing. Um, when we actually get up to the airport in Whitehorse, these clothing packages are waiting for us there. So the base Yukon uh, delivers these packages, and we literally could change right there. So may I suggest, there are washrooms that you can change in, but I just checked the weather right now. It's minus 14 in Whitehorse. And it was about that temperature last year when I did this tour as well. Uh, so it's great. You've got all the boots, everything to put on right there. And these uh, are rated minus 40. And it's interesting because I do have a winter jacket that I bought at Mark's Work Warehouse that I took on this trip. And when we were up in Dawson City, just to see, I wore that Mark's Work Warehouse puffy jacket at minus 28 degrees. I was cold. <laughs> These jackets, not cold. It's minus 40. They're heavy duty. You will see you will be very warm. So they include the toque, the boots, gloves, uh, everything that, uh, that you need. Okay, so there's the Best Western that we're going to stay at in Whitehorse. And what we typically do is uh, we're going to have dinner here as a group. And I like to go in the games room. It's a little bit of a private room. They've got pool tables. They've got shuffleboard. And it's the same menu as the room next to us. But it's private, and it's kind of nice. And it's a good way for you to get to know your group. Um before I go any further, I should say that your tour manager is Sel on this tour. Uh, Selvin, one of our, he's been with us for about six months now. Very, very happy with Selvin. Had great reviews. So he is going to be your tour leader, along with all the local guides that we use and all of our partners. I commend uh, Sel. I had him on the Leavenworth trip just now. Delightful. Oh, Benita, thank you for saying that. Yeah, delightful, fellow. So Okay, that's great. Okay, so there's the Best Western. Um, this is a picture from last year. This is the little plane that we take from Whitehorse to Dawson City. So it's like 30 rows. Uh, I think one side has single row and the other side has two seats. Uh, but that's the plane you're going to get on. And that's going to take you right into Dawson. Is, it, so, is that a Dash 8? I think it is, Kent. I'm not sure. It's the small plane. Oh, okay. It's a one-hour flight <clears throat> in, into Dawson. So as you can see, even though it was really cold there, clear, perfect. It was, it was gorgeous last year. The weather was really nice. Okay. So when we get into Dawson, we are going to go for lunch. Uh, we're going to go for lunch at the uh, El Dorado Hotel. So there's not a lot open in Dawson. And it's uh, it's a neat place at this time of year because, A, it's very remote. And, again, not a lot of uh, restaurants open. So we'll be going to the El Dorado Hotel for lunch. We're literally going to eat at every restaurant that's open <laughs> on this tour. So... Uh, after we have lunch, uh, we are going to do a uh, 
Midnight Dome and Goldfields tour with the Klondike Experience. So this is Jesse and his team. They've got about eight or nine van buses. Uh, really great organization. They pick us up from the airport. Uh, they're going to take us to uh, lunch, and then we're going to do this tour. So this is our first stop. Uh, this is the Midnight Dome. And again, their tires are studded. So they climb this big hill, and wow, there we are at the Midnight Dome. Great picture opportunity. And here's two guests from last year at the Midnight Dome. That's a better picture of the exact uh, gear that you're going to be wearing. And I should say that uh, Tina, who owns Hua Wear Tours and Whitehorse, uh, she was driving the van last year. And when we were on the Yukon Wildlife Preserve, we saw another group, because this is very popular at this time of year in Whitehorse surrounding area to see the Northern Lights. And she told the whole group, look at those people in their suits. Those are the cheap ones. Look how cold they look. <laughs> it was true. And they're all red. It looked like we're like the safety team, right? Look like we're it just, these are cool. Dark blue, very good quality. Okay. So after we finish at the Midnight Dome, we're going to go to the Goldfields tour. And this is, um, well, it's really educational. And I'm not going to get into, into it too much, but it's about the Gold Rush. And uh, they're going to go through all that information with you. Then we're going to check into the very classic downtown hotel. This is the hotel that you see on all the commercials. Uh, the Yukon does a great job of having commercials promoting uh, uh, the territory. And uh, yeah, so that's the hotel we stay at. Uh, it gets a little funny. They are, the restaurants are closed Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So we're going to go for breakfast at the El Dorado Hotel. And we're going to walk there about 500 meters. Uh, and then we'll be having breakfast in the second morning here at the downtown hotel. Okay. So uh, that night, we are going to go to the Drunken Goat Tavern. This is the number one rated restaurant uh, based on TripAdvisor and their popularity. Uh, food is very good. Uh, the Aurora Inn, where we're going for dinner as well, is the nicest restaurant for sure. Uh, but this is a fun place. It's big. It's lively. The locals go. The tourists go. The owner is a real character. Uh Here's a picture of uh, our happy group last year, just getting in like you guys will do. We just got into Dawson, we checked into the hotel, we did our tour, and now we're uh, we're having dinner. So that's a dinner included. And the year before, just to show you, I got the owner, his name is Tony. I pulled him out in front of everybody and I said, listen, why is it called the drunken goat? We need to hear the story because I've heard rumors. So I pulled him out from the back and he told the story of the drunken goat. And, uh, well, he's taken a shine to our groups, see him every year. And uh, he bought us a round of Uzo <laughs> after he told us that story. Uh, kind of fun. So that was a few years ago on a summer trip to the Yukon. But uh, that's the restaurant we're going to for our first night. Okay. So here we are here at the Drunken Goat Taverina. Uh, after we finish, you've got some free time in the hotel. And we're going to start our first uh, Northern Lights tour also with the Klondike experience. So I mentioned before, uh, when we did the first Klondike tour, there was a beam of Northern Light that shone right down on that same street that, um, that the Drunken Goat is. And it was very strong. And it literally, the hair stood up on the back of my neck. It was, it was pretty wild. Uh, we didn't see the Northern Lights from where we went to, just a little unlucky. Uh, but here's where we go. So uh, we cross the frozen river, and I'll let you tell, I'll let them tell you all about that uh, by minibus, by coach. It's like a 24 passenger bus, and we make our way to this uh, yurt. And if the Northern Lights are shining, again, very remote, it's across the river. This is where people live off grid, and they've got snacks and uh, we encourage people to, you know, if you want to bring something a little stronger, 
Uh, I did have Crown Royal for the group last year. So if you wanted to sip on that, uh, you're more than welcome to. And uh, that is Nobi. So he's a Japanese guy inside that yurt telling us all about the scientific facts of Northern Lights viewing. The fact that plasma uh, plays a big part and uh, how it changes colors, the green, the pink, the purple. Uh, it all has to do with the plasma. So uh, that is Nobi, one of the guides. And that is our first night of Northern Lights viewing. And this is uh, in Dawson. And hopefully that's what we see. Okay. And I, can I ask, um, how late does that go from 11 o'clock till to what? what? What's the timing of that? And that's a great question. Uh, we typically do two hours. So come back to the hotel for 1 a.m. If they if they can see that the northern lights aren't happening, then we will head back earlier. Uh, but typically, what we do is eleven till one when we're in Dawson for the northern lights viewing. Okay, and next day we are going to have breakfast at the El Dorado Hotel. Uh, it's a very good breakfast. Uh, you will like that. It's a walk from the hotel, so that is uh, again about five hundred meters. As the uh, the breakfast restaurant is not open on that Wednesday. Tuesdays and Wednesdays, they're closed. So the timing didn't work out there. But what we're going to do is we're going to do a historic walking tour. Again, this is with the Klondike experience. And this is cool because it goes into a lot of these historic buildings that have been uh, kept up. And uh, this is one of the taverns. And uh, that's one of the guides there. Uh, that provided a walking tour for us in years past. Uh, having fun, pouring some whiskey, fake whiskey. But uh, yeah, so we'll do a tour of the buildings. And then we're going to go to a restaurant for lunch. And this is lunch on your own. And you'll remember this conversation. It's a different kind of restaurant. It's small, busy. It was Air Canada's, the En Rouge magazine their best new restaurant of the year in Canada, 2021, I believe. So yeah, really neat. Uh, but um, you won't get a ham and cheese sandwich. It'll be something special, <laughs> if you know what I mean. It'll be ham and cheese, but they elevate it. Something a little different for you. So that's lunch. And then we are going to uh, have some free time in the hotel. And then this is the Aurora Inn. So this is where we have uh, dinner included. And this is where you'll find a lot of the, uh, the Northern uh, flair in their food. So they do have uh, some of those Northern meats, bison, different things like that. Uh, you will get uh, Arctic char. Uh, items like that there. So that's a dinner included. Uh, the food is more expensive uh, up in the Yukon than it is here. So we give you a generous budget. You'll order whatever you want off the menu. Okay. Adult drinks are always on your own. And then we're going to make our way across the frozen river again for some Northern Light viewing. Okay. So just to flip back, uh, a bonton for lunch, Aurora for dinner. And then we depart again at 11 p.m. across the frozen river. Okay. So when we get to the next day, we have breakfast inside the downtown hotel. They are open. It's a lovely breakfast. And then we're going to fly. Uh, we got a private transfer to the airport. And we're going to fly to Whitehorse. And here's what Whitehorse looks like in the winter. We're back to the Best Western Gold Rush Inn. And again, that is a uh, private transfer with Who, What, Where Tours, Tina and her team. And we're going to go to a spa. And I know that sounds odd, uh, but it's a new property. When I say new, it's about a year and a half old, two years old. It's the Eclipse Nordic Spa. And we are going to have lunch. Now, keep in mind, that's a lunch included, but it's a late lunch. You're going to have a 
sandwich on that plane. <laughs> but they've got very good soup. Uh, I would recommend just having something light here at this uh, spa. And because the nicest restaurant on this trip is Giorgio's. That's a dinner included. And I think that's like a 60 $65 budget for that dinner. Uh, very good food there. Very popular. Nice buzz. Really busy. Uh, so we'll check another hotel and then we'll go to Giorgio's for dinner. But before we do that, we have an opportunity to go to, and there's Tina. Uh, she's the owner of Who What Wear Tours. I think she's got four or five of those vans. And then with her luggage, what she'll do is she'll literally pull a trailer and all the luggage goes in the trailer. Those are uh, studded tires. But she's going to take us to the Yukon Wildlife Preserve and uh, lots to see at the Yukon Wildlife Preserve, including the elusive moose. So they have four moose. This is an original picture from last, year, last year's winter tour. So we're in her van, and then there's about three or four opportunities for you to get out of the van and get up close and personal with the animals. Uh, this wildlife preserve was owned by a family and uh, they just aged out. Uh, they retired and the Yukon government bought this whole property from them, with all these animals. Uh, and it's actually made famous by, and I don't know this, but people seem to, uh, Yukon veterinarian. It's on one of the uh, Crave TV or anyway. So the Yukon veterinarian I probably have that wrong. She does most of her work at the Wildlife Preserve, brings animals in. 95% uh, of these pictures are original. This one is not, <laughs> but it is uh, of the Yukon Wildlife Preserve. So in the winter time, my favorite animal in this whole preserve is the red-tailed fox. Uh, he has had too much coffee, and this fox is uh, very active. <laughs> you will see him running around uh, a really neat visit. So we'll do the Yukon Wildlife Preserve. We'll check into the hotel and we'll have dinner at Giorgio's. Now, this is not Giorgio's, but this is a dinner on the Northern Lights tour in Whitehorse just to show you uh, a happy group dining together. Okay. The next day, what we're going to do, and uh, no, no Northern Lights viewing that night. Uh, you can walk out if you like um, from our hotel right on Main Street. You can walk towards the water, which would be a good place to see the Northern Lights. Um, but we've got five nights of, you know, formal Northern Lights viewing. This may be a night that uh, you take off, up to you. But the next day we go to the McBride Museum of Yukon History. And this picture doesn't do it any justice. Uh, it's in a modern building, but they've got all the original artifacts. Uh, it's very well done. Uh, we take a guided tour here. And the guided tour is first class. You're going to enjoy that very much. And you literally see how the Yukoners lived in the day. They did such a great job of procuring all these original artifacts. It's, it's vast uh, to the point where, like we do this tour in the summer and we always go to the Lake Bride Museum. Most people go back after the guided tour, after lunch, just to see more. So that's up to you. Uh, after we finish here, and excuse the sirens, we're on Main Street here in Vancouver. After we finish at the uh, McBride Museum, we're going to a local's favorite. It's called Burnt Toast. And it literally has a little bit of a burnt toast smell to it. It's the funniest thing. Uh, but it's one of those things where they don't take group reservations until you know them. And now they do with us. So nice group reservation. Uh, that's the Burnt Toast restaurant and that is a lunch that's included we used to do a lot of pre-orders on our tours something happened over the pandemic the restaurants no longer want pre-orders like they used to makes it easier for us we give you a budget it's the honor system and you order whatever you want again adult drinks are on your own after we have Lunch at Burnt Toast, we would already have checked out of the hotel, and we are going to make our way to Tagish. Again, that's about an hour and a half drive. And when we take that drive, there's a lot of highway. But then it is 
six kilometers uh, off of the highway into the backcountry. Uh, if it's snowy, great, smooth ride. Uh, in the summertime, because we come here in the summer as well, uh, a little, little more bumpy. But here is the main cabin at the Southern Lakes Resort. This is where we'll be having your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We also have a games night that we're going to be having here. And uh, I've been very impressed by the staff here. Uh, as soon as you get there, they're just good people. Uh, very, very helpful. Uh, you can tell it's almost there. I mean, it's not a five star, but the service feels like that really good people. Uh, with all that being said, you've got breakfast, lunch, and dinner included. But when we get there, we're just going to have that dinner included based on that, on that time. We've already had lunch. Here's a picture you've probably seen in the catalog. <clears throat> Two different kinds of cabins. Uh, the one sort of uh, closer to us, that's the lake front cabin. Some of them have uh, one bed, some of them have two beds. And then in the back is the deluxe cabins. And, you know, it just, it's kind of funny. They've got eight cabins in total. We've got all of them reserved. Uh, they have a family cabin as well. But it works out that if you're not a married couple, a single traveler, the deluxe cabins have a bed and then like a little bed in front of it that isn't really appropriate for our guests. So the folks that are sharing, unless they're a couple sharing the same bed, they're going to get one of the, either the family cabin or the deluxe lake, excuse me, the lakefront cabin with two beds. Uh, if you're going single, there's a chance that you'll be in one of the deluxe cabins. And it just is what it is. Okay. When you're in your cabin and you're looking out at frozen Tagus Lake and you see this and you are literally there for three days and three nights, it's a very good feeling. This is world-class. And I literally had a bit of a moment uh, running this tour company for 15 years, sitting right here, taking a picture going, wow, this is amazing. And it really is. So in years past, we've always rented snowshoes for people to leave them in your cabin. I didn't this year. You don't need them. Uh, you literally will never wear them. Because if you look right out front here, they clear all the snow where we walk. So your snow boots are more than uh, fine and adequate to be sort of roaming around. We do rent snowshoes when we do our snowshoeing excursion. Uh, and those are uh, nicer snowshoes, but you just don't need them. But yeah, so um, you may have read the trip description that says that this is the perfect place to see Northern Lights. Because if you look at that mountain range, it sort of blocks the wind that's coming. The mountain range surrounds this lake. And again, it's away from all the lights. Just perfect. There's only two people, two organizations that are actually at Tagish Lake. Southern Lakes Resort and Tagish Kennels. So that's the dog sledding company that we work with. More on that in a little bit. Okay, here's another picture of the uh, larger lodge. So if you're in one of the deluxe cabins, uh, you would just walk down uh, right through here to the lodge for uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, here's a picture of what the lodge looks like inside. And we've got the whole resort to ourselves. And it's kind of cool. The staff knows that. Like, oh, like we literally have the whole resort. Only have eight cabins. We have all of them. Uh, so this tour is sold out. Cannot take any more people unless they wanted to share. So here's an example I took with my iPhone. Um, so these spring rolls are all house made. Everything is house made. Uh, it's a scratch kitchen. Uh, it's not gourmet food. I need to be careful with that word. People hold you to it. What is gourmet? But it's fresh, comfortable food. Okay. Uh, this is the main schnitzel with the spatzel, a little bit of veg on the side. So that is a pork uh, uh, schnitzel that they had there with a, it was a hunter's mushroom sauce. And their ice cream 
is something to behold. So we went to lunch here 2021, kind of right at the tail end of the pandemic. Nothing was open. All our regular restaurants were not open. Southern Lakes Resort was open. So we drove there for lunch. And this ice cream is like $12. Uh, we make sure that they include it in our package because you need to try this ice cream. <laughs> and it sounds really weird that it's cold out here eating ice cream, uh, but it's delicious. So, okay. So here is a few years ago. And uh, I wasn't on this tour. We had one of our guides and they decided to build a fire during the day. Uh, you'll notice that bottle of whiskey on the bottom left-hand corner. <laughs> Uh, the whiskey is important at night when it's when it's biting cold. You've got your super suits. Uh, but that being said, uh, I believe, and you'll see in this itinerary, there's no time to have a fire during the day. You'll see. We've got lots of activities. So I don't build a fire during the day. Uh, we build that at night. And that's what it looks like at night while we're waiting for the northern lights. So a couple of things. Uh, you'll see there's lots of wood there. And they do provide a fire starter uh, and everything we need to build a fire. They offered to come and build the fire for us. Part of the fun is building the fire. And uh, we had two leaders on the tour last year. They were both there like half an hour early. This lady and this man didn't know each other, but they were the fire leaders. So if you like to build a fire, dig in. If you want us to build the fire for you, sell us more than capable. Kent, I see the wheels turning. You're more than welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay. So we're in our super suits. We are waiting for the Northern Lights. And we typically get out here at like 11 at night and wait till 1, 1 a.m. is the way that we do that. So sell your tour manager. will walk to this fire, which is in front of your cabins, uh, just to walk down the lane and build a big fire and uh, keep warm. Again, if you do... Uh, have a nip, this would be the place to have a bottle to stay warm, have some fun, and wait for those northern lights. The frozen lake, Tagish, is right behind here. So all that darkness, perfect. And again, on February the 9th, this is the new moon. So you will not have that moonlight. Okay, and ultimately, this is what we're looking for. So these are pictures provided by uh, Southern Lakes Resort, Northern Lights at their property. And again, this is that mountain range in behind. The next day, ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna have breakfast inside the lodge and we have a snowshoeing activity. Now, if you're thinking, wow, uh, I'm not really up for an epic snowshoe walk. Uh, this is not epic. It's about 15 minutes there, 15 minutes back. Plus we spend some time there, right? Maybe 20 minutes. Uh, but for the most part, it's very level. Um, the very nice young man last year that led us on the snowshoe tour. If you can't get those snowshoes on, that's his job. He will make sure he buckles them onto your boots, make sure you're taken care of. And I love it when they bring the dog. You see the dog in the right-hand corner? <laughs> Very cool. So uh, here's a picture last year. Uh, Lynn having a great time. Um, I don't even want to tell you the story about Lynn, but I have never laughed so hard with a guest as last year. This Lynn told me, because I like to nap before I watch the Northern Lights, right? So we've had dinner. I'd like to get an hour and a half nap in. Not everybody can. And Lynn said, I can't nap. Something happens to me. When I wake up, she's just not all there. So this lady had a nap and she woke up to do the Northern Lights. And she's like, I just don't feel I don't, something. I don't feel right. Something's wrong with my head. I feel like I'm on drugs or something. We looked down at her feet. She had been wearing uh, her boots backwards for like two hours. <laughs> she wore them opposite for like two hours. We mm. laughed. It was so funny. Anyway, she's in a few pictures. She's just very photogenic. Um, here's a picture of the appetizer at lunch uh, from the chef there. And then I'm not sure if this was a lunch or a dinner, uh, but I believe it's a chicken breast and some vegetables and, uh, and some sauce as well. Okay. 
So uh, the next day, or later that afternoon, I should say, we have this very fun activity. And, you know, I wasn't sure how this was going to go. And we, we do this every year, but it was my first time last year doing this. And we do this uh, ice fishing. It's supposed to be an ice fishing demonstration, much more than that. So this very nice man comes out with us, tells us about Tagish Lake, what kind of fish are in there. Uh, the lake is about 18 inches of ice. And you would think it would be more, right? But it's not. And then they literally auger through the ice and they've got all the fishing poles. So you can take that auger if you want, hold on tight with your friend, and uh, down that goes. We, it's really funny moments uh, being on the on the frozen lake. Uh, we've got our super suits on, everybody's warm. And there again is the very photogenic Lynn with her fishing pole in the ice hole. We did not catch anything. Good picture too, just to show you the back some of these cabins gives you kind of a lay of the land kind of right behind that snowmobile is the big lodge so it shows you how close everything is and again they will groom that <clears throat> okay let's see where we are here folks so that's the ice finishing uh ice fishing demonstration we're gonna have dinner at the resort and then some more northern lights viewing so again, that's a picture of a group from past years uh, eating at the lodge. And then that night we hopefully see this, right? So these are pictures, as you can see, right from the resort. Uh, that would be amazing. So uh, fingers crossed, good things happen to good people. Okay, the next day, you're going to wake up in your cabin. And the cabins are... Um, They've been, like, this used to be the 10-mile uh, cabins years and years and years ago. And this uh, organization bought it and refurbished everything. They're nice inside. I mean, you're in a cabin. It's rustic in a cabin. But the linens are very nice. Everything is very nice. So you're going to wake up in your cabin. And here's where it gets special. We're going to go dog sledding. And the cool thing is, is I took a picture with everybody walking down. I mentioned that the only other person that is on Tagish Lake, the only other company is Tagish Kennels. And Tagish Kennels is uh, owned by uh, a lady named Michelle and her husband. And they've got three dog sled teams. Now it's really cool because they literally come right to where we are to pick us up. Like it just doesn't get any better. Uh, Here's a picture right here of the owner, Michelle. And the reason I'm showing this particular picture is A, it gives you a sense of what that cradle looks like. You'll be comfortable. You'll be well taken care of. But this owner, Michelle, when we were on this tour, the timing just worked out that the Yukon Quest 300 was happening when we were in Dawson City. So when we were there, uh, one of our guests here, two of our guests actually, waited up till 1.30 in the morning to see Michelle come in, and she won the race. So there was a dispute between uh, the Americans and the Canadians. You've probably heard of the Iditarod. This is part of the Iditarod, right? They're trying to mend the fences, but now they just spend time in America. They split the race into two, and they spend time in the Yukon. So she'll come right from Whitehorse all the way up to Dawson right? Snow on the beards, if she had a beard kind of thing. It was really, really cool. So our guest here was just so thrilled that the winner of the race is driving her sled, right? Very cool. So here's another picture of the, uh, the three different sleds. And I do want to say too, that we went to another kennel in past years just to visit the dogs. As the tour company we work with, they have an option there where we can visit a kennel. There's probably 60 dogs there, all on chains, all barking at the same time. It was quite the scene. These dogs are first class. These dogs are well taken care of. They're very clean. They're ready to pull you. That's what they live for. Uh, but the dogs are absolutely beautiful. So uh, really, really fun. 
And uh, there's one of our guests in the sled. And what they do is they take you on the frozen lake and then they literally will take you into, uh, they will take you into the forest. Um, you know, I'm going to try to share a video. Let, let me try to share this real quick. I'm going to stop share. I'm going to go find this video. Just one second. I should have had this teed up already, but I've got it right here. Just be a moment. Vacations, Yukon, Northern Lights. Yeah, let's see if I have this. Okay. Well, it's not readily available, folks. So apologies. Uh, but you will experience that. Okay, let's continue on. Let me share my screen again. But this lady took a video um, from, it was almost like a, a cam from right here. So it showed her going through the forest. You're going to like that. Uh, people were really excited after that. Okay, so there's your dog sledding. At, that's all included. Uh, it's very safe. It's about 30, 35 minutes on, on the sled. We're going to have lunch at the resort. Uh, then we're going to meet back in that lodge after the dog sledding, after you've had a chance to either shower or just relax in your cabin. Uh, then we meet in the big cabin, uh, excuse me, in the lodge, basically at the same table that we that we eat at. Uh, but they've got a full bar there if you wanted to purchase a drink uh, or non-alcoholic. But they've got every game that you can think of, from Monopoly to Plinko to everything. And it's kind of fun. Uh, we play some games there with everybody prior to dinner. And we typically do that at about 4.30 p.m. Oh, one more picture. There was the other gentleman that stayed up to see the Northern Lights. Excuse me, see uh, Michelle win the uh, Yukon Quest 300. So he was really pumped to be on her sled as well. Okay. So there's another picture of the next night. We're back at the fire waiting for the Northern Lights. Uh, and as I say, we did see them that night, not as strong as the Iceland pictures, not as strong as the photos I just showed you, but we did see Northern Lights and definitely dancing because that's the way the plasma works, right? Moves, uh, pretty neat. These are all original pictures provided by the Southern Lakes Resort. So this is what it would look like sitting right from that fire. Okay. Or you can go for a walk. Okay. Look at all the stars on this picture. Okay. So the next day, what we do here, folks, is uh, we get into... Tina comes back to pick us up to transfer us back to Whitehorse, just the way the flight itinerary worked out. You've got lunch on your own at the 506 All Day Grill. And then we head to the Whitehorse International Airport. Uh, may I suggest that you take that gear that you have and you put it back in that bag before you leave the resort. As when we get to the airport, that Yukon base company, they will be there to pick up our gear. Okay. Come back to uh, uh, the Whitehorse International Airport, back to Vancouver, and that same black car driver will be waiting to take you home. So uh, I do want to mention that uh, all the gratuities are included for the black car driver. Okay, it's built into the price. So if the gentleman is standing there, like he's waiting to be tipped, you need to know that he's been tipped at least $20 already. So gratuities are included. Uh, and the gratuities for the most part are included with our guides as well. Uh, you don't have to tip them. They've been paid very well. Okay. Um, that's really about it, folks. If you've got any questions, you can unmute yourself and I can answer them for you. Jaya. Hi, Troy. I just, uh, because you're giving us the winter gear. So really, I don't need to bring anything warm, do I? Here's what I would do is I would bring a puffy jacket. Okay. Because um, when you take that gear off, 
yeah. and put it back in the bag. I don't know if you've ever been in minus 28 before. Um, <laughs> it's different. It's yeah. a little different, but yeah. that's only in Dawson, much colder in Dawson. So when you pack up all that gear, you can keep the jacket on and then pack that up at the airport. You can, uh, but I like to have my own puffy coat for at that, okay. at that point. Yeah. Uh, um, but I, I would bring sweatpants. Um, like you can wear jeans underneath that gear, but it's more comfortable if you have a pair of sweatpants. Under sweatpants, the sweatpants. Yeah, that's what I was. So, so the pants that they will give us will go on top of our pants. Correct. And then the boots, then we don't need, like, I mean, we need shoes on the airport, but we'll remove our shoes or our, our shoe goes in, in their boot. No, you remove your shoes. Shoes. Okay. Yeah. And that, boot slides right on okay. and those boots are yours for for the trip now these are heavy duty cold rated boots mm -hmm. so your your toes will not get cold i've worn the exact boots you're going to be in it's a bit of an ordeal to get this gear on and off just to be honest with you right every time yeah. i took the boots off the liner came off as well okay after I stopped getting frustrated with that, I just realized this is going to happen. So, yeah. So there's a big liner inside the boot, like a big sock, almost thick. Right. It's almost like a, and then your your shoe goes in there. Bring warm socks, though. Like yeah. If you do have, like, winter socks, I would bring those. Yeah. And uh, in, in the lodge, et cetera, when we sleep or we are inside, it'll be warm? Oh, Yes. It will be heated inside. We so at night we in the middle of the night we don't have to be wearing that gear and sleeping. No, no, you're you'll be very happy with the cabins. These are okay. these are not, um, you know, non insulated cabins. These yeah. they all have their own little hot water heater, forced air. Like it's it's what you would expect for spending this much money to stay there. <laughs> so. Okay. Just that. because, yeah, this is my first time. So mm -hmm. that's good yeah. to know. Yeah. And, and when you go to the lodge for dinner, you know, it's warm in there as well. You won't have your jacket on. Like you saw right. by the pictures, like this yeah. is fine. Oh, or just yeah. a sweater. Yeah. Just one more question, because I don't eat any red meat, mm -hmm. but fish, I don't eat red meat. And I think I did write some, I think you had asked. So I'm fish and chicken only or veg, yep. vegetarian. And the that shouldn't lodge, be a problem, right? Yeah, the lodge has been uh, given the dietary restrictions. Yeah, so, I, I, and I, I somehow remember that somewhere that question was there, and I did put it in. Yep. I wonder whether it was on this form. Um, I don't know. Some, but I'm just, uh, yeah. They are aware that yeah. we're the only group for right. three nights, and yeah. they will have shopped for our group, and they will have this dietary restrictions. So, uh, no problem. Yep. Bonita. Yes, sir. I have a question about weather. So, what happens if <laughs> uh, our flights can't get off the ground, or there's a blizzard going on, or I grew up in the prairie, so I'm, I understand these issues. I'm not just from the West Coast, but I'm wondering, how do you manage that? Um, yeah, that's, that's you know, a have, very good have question. Have had people get st stuck in their cabins for a while or something? or uh, Not stuck in the cabins, but we did have uh, an instance where we could not fly out of Whitehorse. And let, let me take that back. This is two years ago. The Dawson flights were limited. And the only way it worked to get people home is we had to spend another night in Whitehorse. So as a good tour company does, we paid for everybody's hotels. We're taking the risk to bring you up to Dawson. Okay. And, uh, you know, there's all the profit, but people remember that. And, uh, you know, they come again because they know they're going to be taken care of. So uh, if you get stranded somewhere, we will take care of you. Uh, and when I say stranded, you know, <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> it's not like we're going to a remote island. Um, you know, if our flights are delayed coming from Dawson and we have to spend another night in Whitehorse, we'll cover that. It's only happened once. And you so, haven't had any problems with sort of activities that you've planned? Like, 
it was looking a pristine place there with beautiful sky and no snow, but it looked like there'd been a fresh dump of snow and then stomped all over it. So I was just wondering, you know, have you encountered kind of those kinds of things where you're needing to drive to the resort and what happens if you're kind of snowed there for a while? You haven't had to deal with that or? No, these, uh, so first of all, the resort has these little units that clear the snow. Okay. Like it's a first class organization. They clear the snow. When we're leaving the resort and we need to get up and circle out to get back to the main highway, you'll be very impressed with these drivers. And uh, maybe I should mention one thing. So they've all got those studded tires. And these are people that live in the Yukon. And uh, if it's deep snow, their vehicles are prepared for that, right? The one thing I do want to get you mentally prepared for, because this was a little shocking for me, is even the larger van, <clears throat> the way that they manage the snow is they do this a little bit on purpose. And the first time that happened, I'm like, whoa, we're sliding. I don't know if he's doing that on purpose. So it's interesting. Like when we're leaving the resort to get back to the highway, she was to get up that hill, right? But again, she's lived, born and raised in the Yukon. These are the people that we're working with. So um, if there's lots of snow, great. We won't get snowed in. Okay, thank you. If we do, we'll take care of you. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Okay, thanks. Great questions though. Okay, I have a couple of questions. Yes, Ken. Um, we're going to be moving back and forth between planes and buses and all the sort of thing. How much luggage should we be taking with us? That's a very good question. So in your package, it's going to have those luggage guidelines. Because this is a smaller plane, 20 kilograms. So that 20 kilograms, I mean, the standard weight for uh, luggage is 23 kilograms, right? This is 20. So you want to underpack that a little bit. Uh, in terms of your clothing packages, like that, that bag that you're going to have, again, I would, you could either leave that with uh, Air North as you check in. Say, I'm going to check this. No problem. You, your names will be written. All your names will be written on all your all your duffel bags. So you can check that in. But when you get up to Dawson City, you're going to want that jacket. So, uh, but a 20 kilogram uh, checked bag, and you can also bring your duffel bag um, and check that as well. Personally, I'd put it on. Okay. It's going to be too hot for the plane. You're going to take the jacket off of the plane. But I would put that on. And, and you'll be wearing your, your big heavy boots on the plane too, I presume? Yeah, or you can put those uh, back in that duffel bag if you don't want to, right? Right. And then that duffel bag can be checked. And it's great. Your name's already on a tag. So when, okay, when you but, get... To... But what I mean is um, how much um, should we be... I mean, should should we take a... A big suitcase or a small suitcase or? It's an eight day trip. And I would bring a lot of sort of long underwear for lack of a better term. Okay. I think, I think ladies call them leggings. <laughs> I, I'm, can't, I know you don't know that. <laughs> they didn't either. Okay. But, but long underwear. Um, I bring my big suitcase. I do. Okay. It's, eight, it's eight days. And is the like check, checked in bag free or do we pay yes. for it? No, no, no. We it's don't. Free. Oh, bag. so we can oh, bring yes. a bigger, big, bring a bigger bag. Just not over 20 kilograms. Yeah, got it. But yeah, okay. That's what so, I wanted. Just, just into footwear. So let's say, for instance, you don't want to put those big boots on. You're, you're somewhere. Uh, there's, those are big boots. Um, don't bring a very light sneaker. Right? If you're walking at Southern Lakes Resort to the main lodge and you're on compact snow. Uh, I would bring more of a, you know. Boots? Yeah. Just not okay. like a, just not like a light sneaker. 
Okay, and, and I have I have one other question. Um, there's a couple of places that we're going to have to, you know, pay for things and so on. Um, do you need cash or will credit cards uh, work? Everybody accepts credit cards. Okay, well, that's good to know. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, most of these meals are included. Okay. Especially the dinners. And yeah, yeah. Because the reason I'm asking this is because they are on this form that I filled out last year, they asked for a passport number. Do I need to carry my passport? No. No. That's what I thought because you're not no. leaving Canada. Right. Bit of a generic form that shouldn't actually be on there. I mean, passport's a great ID. Uh, it's the number one ID, but you don't need to. Just your driver's, driver's license. Driver's license. Yeah. Driver's license, BCID, whatever, yeah. you, whatever you have. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because passport is a hassle and God forbid if you lose it. Yes. Driver's license you lose, it's okay. It's not that bad, but that's why. Yeah, traveling needed, within Canada. Okay. Fair enough. Exactly. Iris. Just to clarify that luggage question. So we have one checked bag that can weigh up to 23K. Is that right? 20. 20K. 20 even. Yeah. And we're taking, uh, well, obviously, as women, we probably have a purse or something on board the plane. No problem. No problem. So the way that the airlines work is you're also allowed two personal items. That can be a purse. That can be a backpack. It can be my laptop uh, briefcase, yeah. stuff like that. There, there is overhead storage, uh, but it's a small plane. So, and worst case scenario, Iris, uh, if the nice folks at Yukon Air North say, you know what, you may, you may want to check that. They've got the little tags. You can just write your name on it, put it on, and it gets checked. But I don't know what you would be checking. Maybe a backpack. Your purse would come with you. No, right. it, it was exactly that, the, the, the tablet or co computer or whatever. So that small case that that's in plus the purse is okay on the plane, and then you've checked your other, your 20 your 20 kilograms thank exactly. you you're welcome on that question um what kind of is there wi-fi service in some of these places or or not or what about that connectivity that's a great question uh you've got wi-fi in whitehorse in dawson southern lakes resort i don't think there's wi-fi uh, let me double check that right now. I am just running through my memory banks. So you're, let me just, uh, let me check that. I don't think there is. Uh, let me just go Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi at the lodge. There you go. So you've got Wi-Fi at the lodge, no Wi-Fi in your cabins. So... Good time to record that Netflix, record that YouTube onto your phone or your tablet. Uh, but yeah, you'll, you'll have it at the lodge. Great. That's great to know. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, folks, that pretty much concludes our meeting. Uh, you've got a really nice group uh, going on this trip. Uh, Sell Your Tour Manager is also excited to be on this trip. It's funny. He's doing what I did last year, and that's going from the Yukon in the winter to Maui. <laughs> so he's literally going from cold to hot. And it's uh, I did exactly the same thing last year. Uh, but uh, good for him and good for you guys for going on a special trip. So are, you, are you going to be on a trip too? Yeah, you're going to be there or no? No. Okay, so it's just Sal. Cell is your tour leader. Okay. And, you know, as, as our company grows, it's funny. I can't be on all the trips. And I had a lady on our trip to Iceland last year. And, you know, there's other tour companies in this space. <clears throat> and she said, you're the only owner that travels as much with everybody. You don't see the owners on all the trips. Right. They have to run the company. So if we're waiting for the catalog to come out and all the other companies have delivered their catalogs, I am a traveling man. Right. And uh, so this year I need to focus a little bit more. We've got some very qualified tour managers in Cell and Lacey and of course myself still. 
but uh yeah i just can't be on all these trips it's uh it's a lot uh but we appreciate you guys coming and uh you always know that i've written this itinerary through the eyes of the customer i've been on these tours myself and uh, i stand by it 100 percent, and i'm only a phone call away but the feedback that I'm hearing about Cell, thank you, Bonita, and about Lacey, is they just love these our tour managers. Just really good, friendly, down to earth people, uh, and they really I subscribe agree. to. Okay, awesome. Are you talking about uh, Lacey, Kent, or Cell? Both, both of them. I've been with both of them. Awesome. Yeah. So Cell is uh, a former hotel manager. The man knows service, so he's here to help you. Uh, and we're really, really pleased with him. So any other questions, folks? All right. So again, you've got nine guests.